Hey Aries, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for August 2018. And before we jump in, uh, we're getting ready for a September time frame, you guys, when Astrology 101, the basics class, is going to kick off again for the next set of sessions. So if you'd like to get signed up, registration closes on August 25th. All of the details are in the description box down below or at stormygrace.com. Okay, so August, it's like, man, we've had all of this retrograde energy. We've been eclipsing like crazy. We get to end our eclipse season um, this month, but this is still not a month of full power for you, Aries. That's just not the way things are working. Your ruling planet does come out of retrograde this month, but it doesn't happen until the end of the month. In fact, it's still backtracking, so it's gonna end up in the sign of Capricorn, so just not full force moving forward yet. But there's a lot going on, right? We've got Mercury still retrograde, so we're still considering, rethinking, re-editing, revising information. Mars coming direct. We've got Uranus taking a retrograde. We've got a solar eclipse happening this month. So still a busy time, but it is not a time Time of pure forward moving power, okay? So let's jump in and break this month down by date and talk through this, okay? Right at the beginning of the month, it's actually really beautiful here on the 6th. We've got Venus moving into the sign of Libra. So lighting up your seventh house space. Now, this is such a gorgeous energy because it really does help to bring some peace, some harmony, some diplomacy into your life. And the fact is you have a lot of partnership, romance and expressive, just very good energy to work with this month. Um, but this is the thing. You've also got some other energies this month that may put you in a position where you have to deal with a little bit of drama to get to the good stuff, right? So Venus makes this move over here into your partnership sector. It's gonna stay here all the way until September 9th. So this is a very nice, long movement for you, just over a month. So what does that mean? Now, if you have business things going on, you've been trying to make business decisions, this is a wonderful energy for bringing some harmony to the table. If you're in a partnership or some kind of committed relationship already, this could be a time where, um, because August does have a little bit of heat to it, this could maybe help take some of the, um, take the temperature down a little bit between you and your partner. But the fact that I think about when I look at Venus moving over here into your seventh house is when we get to the 9th of August, Venus and Saturn are going to come into a face off with each other. And so this is gonna be grounding for you. This is going to be maturing energy for you in your partnership and romantic life. And I will tell you, Aries, if you're starting to identify or you have with this retrograde, areas where you need to kind of grow up a little bit more, you need to be more affectionate, you need to know your worth, you need to tell someone else or celebrate someone else's worth a little bit more, it'll definitely be a time where you have some clarity to be able to do that. Now, if you are single, once Venus moves over here into... Um, Libra, it could for sure, you know, bring someone into your world, especially because the solar eclipse that happens on the 11th is actually going to fall in your fifth house. So this is the house of true love, romance, um, beginnings, conception, like it's just such a wonderfully um, joyful new kind of house. So it could certainly between these energies bring someone new into your life. Now here's the thing, because Mercury is still retrograde, it could also be bringing back someone from your past, even if it's just a memory or a vision of someone from your past or something like that. So yes, it could be a reconciliation between you and someone. It could also be, you know, that you think about that relationship from the past and you're like, here's where I could have done better or here's what I don't want anymore. And you're willing, willing to let that go. Whatever it is, if things come to you romantically, partnership-wise this month, Aries from the past, it's for you to decide if you're going to continue to hold it or if you're going to let it go, okay? Now, the good news about some of that is that Mercury is going to turn direct on August 19th. I feel like if you're going to make any big partnership decisions, if you can wait until after Mars comes direct because Mars is your ruling planet. So giving you the chance to be at full power is going to be in your best interest. If you can wait until after the 27th, I think that you have a little bit more clarity and focus around your action for sure. Okay. 
All right, here on the 7th, we've got Uranus turning retrograde in the sign of Taurus. So Uranus is going to flip back around. So what are we going to redo, relook at, reconsider? Well, when Uranus is retrograde, we go back over the ways that we have compromised our freedom. We sometimes bring back friendships into our lives, right? Ways that we don't feel aligned socially. We get to go back over all of these things. The biggest thing when I think about Uranus retrograde is really the ways that you maybe have not been expressing your own um, individuality, right? And Uranus is going to bring a little bit of chaos because he's retrograde, so he could be bringing some chaos from the past that he's also asking you to step up and be a little bit more assertive and own your stuff over. Or he's going to bring back a friendship or something social from the past for you to handle, okay? Now, on the 11th, we've got that new moon partial solar eclipse happening in Leo. Now here's the thing, Leo is big, it's beautiful, it's joyful. This is your fifth house, right? So there is a lot of heart and courage and passion and joy that's gonna be making its way to the table. But one of the things that Leo is also about is a little bit of drama, right? So the fifth house, this could be love, romance, any of those things, you could see a little bit of stir, a little bit of drama here. But ultimately, you're gonna see some new beginnings here as well. Now, the other thing that you could be seeing is things around and related to children, right? Aries, I can't stress to you enough, right? Mercury is still retrograde. Mars is still retrograde at this solar eclipse. So here's the thing. You may have things going on in your world and you want to push forward with them. And you're going to find that you don't have full push forward power here. So what do you do? Instead, plant these seeds of intention. This is the new moon for the month. You've got six months for things to play out. If this is something with your children, you know, maybe you're trying to force yourself back into this um, school year routine and you just feel like you're not getting in there. Maybe you have a child who's struggling in some way, shape or form. This could certainly be that or it's kind of a sluggish energy around this. But what I also think that this is going to be phenomenal for is anything that has past situation written on it with all of this retrograde energy, this new moon will help you have some new solutions. So I think that's really beautiful for you, okay? Now, as we get to the 12th, we've got um, Mars entering into Capricorn. Absolutely beautiful energy. So it has... It's still retrograde, but it has gone back and entered back into Capricorn. So you may be re-looking at work, career, um, your reputation, your status in the world, these kinds of things. This could be heavily on your mind. What do you want to be when you grow up? With Mars here, instead of having that launch you forward, it may be taking you back to something that you wanted to do before. I'm telling you, Aries, for some of you, you may have wanted to go back to school do something like that and now you're seeing the way to be able to segue into that as we get towards the end of the month and move that forward okay on the 19th we've got mercury coming direct in the sign of leo in fact it's coming direct at 11 degrees of leo and this is going to be lighting up your fifth house again now keep in mind here that while mercury is coming out of retrograde. First of all, he needs a little bit of time to get turned back around and resume his orbit. But also, the retrograde cycle is not all the way over for him until September 2nd. And what that means is that he's going to turn back around and be direct, but he's still got a shadow time. So there's still some things that you've been working on, reconsidering, re-editing, whatever you could still be working on. And it'll be around these children, your joy, your voice, your creativity, romance, all of these fifth house type of matters. Okay. Now, on the 23rd, we've got the sun entering into Virgo territory, so we're going to be lighting up matters in your sixth house, your health, your daily routine, um, co-workers, work. These are all things that if you are a freelance person, this could actually be something that uh, piques your interest or an opportunity begins to come your way or something like that. Now, Aries, as we end the month on the 26th, we've got a full moon happening in Pisces, and this is lighting up. Right? Remember, the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we're going to take a shift. Now, we've had all of this shift in the retrograde energy, all of this shift in the, in the um, eclipse energy. Now, here we are. This is the 12th house for you. 
you may feel like you need a break, Aries. You may feel like you need some downtime to rest and to rejuvenate. And Aries, especially if in July you were doing a lot of moving around, a lot of being very flexible, going with the flow, changing directions at the drop of a hat, you may need to settle down, sit down, schedule a downtime, a massage or something like that for yourself. But whatever it is, it is about that you need to recenter, reset, and get ready for things as we move forward because the four Forward energy is coming. That's your thing. Like you like that, right? Forward energy. Let's go. But this month is not the time yet. So use your rest period wisely before we get out there and go. Now I will tell you too, for a couple of you, um, because Mars is turning direct just a day later, as we have all of this energy happening here in this 12th house, um, I would caution you, um, if you've got something going on in your world that is a secret or you've been trying to keep secret or something like that, there is a possibility that those things could start to kind of squeeze themselves out. Now, for some people, that's not going to be great because if it's, you know, an affair or you've been doing something behind the scenes, maybe those are things you don't want exactly public. But if it's something that you've been working on, you've been maybe just keeping it very quiet, you can start to see little bits of that squeezing out as we get to the end of the month, which may actually be to your benefit as we get into next month. So I hope that this finds you well, Aries. I think it's going to be a great month. Please remember this is not the month for ultimate power for you, which of course, this absolutely depends on your natal chart. So if you don't have your natal chart, click in the description down below, grab it. If you need to sit down, see what all of this eclipse energy, all of this coming direct energy is bringing your way, book an appointment with me at stormygrace.com, okay? I love you guys so much. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.